What's up everybody? My name is Ash Barth and welcome to another discussion video. During the last discussion video we talked about the love and hate relationship that this game usually has. In this video, well first of all we're not going to be talking again at the empty beach and the boat at the beach. We're talking about the concept arts again. Because yes we did manage to get every one of them again. What we're talking about is the uh, reasoning of the game's plot. In which case, there is a couple of plot holes that I will have to point out. First of all, we have the revenge plot. If you do recall, I've happened to play the last Last of Us. Uh, well, especially when it came to Joel having to rescue uh, Ellie from the Fireflies, and even killing off uh, Marlene just to get uh, uh, Ellie out of here. Especially... This is kind of one thing that kind of bothers me a bit, especially when playing in this game again while doing the collectibles. Wouldn't it be better just to donate blood or something? Because if the immune system is definitely inside right, of I, uh, Ellie's brain, wouldn't it also be possible that the blood throwing through even the brain could also be the cure and such? I mean, it could be much easier and avoid all the fighting. Just, <laughs> I don't know, just donate some blood. And, and see if that helps as an experiment, at least in non-violent way. Eh, but again, it doesn't really matter because it's the cycle of life and such, or rather the cycle of violence. Hence of why the revenge plot comes up. At the end of The Last of Us 1, you have the option to kill one of the doctors. Well, of course, me myself, if you've all uh, played, uh, watched through my first Last of Us playthrough, well, my LP. I did kill the doctor. And it could be interesting. Could have been interesting to pull forward to such, such like a paradox revolution. Like, if you had the option to not kill the doctor and let him live, and if your save file from the first game would carry over to the second, maybe we wouldn't have much of the Abby hey, revenge plot because, yeah, Abby's revenge plot started with Joel killing off the doctor. Again, whether you've spared the Doctor or not, inside of the first game, it doesn't really matter because they have there was set in stone whatsoever. But, you know, could have been an interesting idea. Especially um, as Abby having to kill Joe doesn't really quench her. Well, even to say her, a couple of her friends like Nora and I think Mel as well did say that they uh, that they usually get some nightmares and such like was it really the idea was it really possible to go through the cycle of violence but then again we already had a bit of a cycle of violence because with Abby killing off Joel Ellie would not be going out and having her revenge plot story which yeah speaking of that could be one of the other things that everybody gets so tired of I kind of remember her seeing a few tweets just like this revenge story from Redo the, uh, the Healer is better than Last of Us 2's his revenge plot story. It never really makes a difference because a lot of people don't even say revenge plot stories are getting kind of old. The cliche is dying. Mm, I would not say so because, to be honest, revenge plot stories is one of my favorite cliches. Like, well, love at first sight, getting to know each other better, her zero to hero cliches. Most of the cliches like that are my most favorites, not to plenty of other people. Kind of understanding why people would say that, but I digress. Now we go back to the cycle of violence because... Here's the thing. If you're living in a world like The Last of Us, which I'm gonna go point out, if I were to live in a post-apocalyptic world, my, my most favorite first choice would have to be the universe of The Last of Us. I mean, it's nature taking back, back from the earth, earth and nature taking over the buildings as you see growth and you see wild animals going out and about, living peaceful days. Eh, almost thinking like Swamp Things ending from Injustice 2 where the green takes over from now on instead of humanity and animals. Especially hey, as it's not as much as how Resident Evil well, it does so. It's like, oh, virus attack, post-apocalyptic. Even a lot of people admit that zombie apocalypse movies do tend to get old. 
And I'm not gonna lie, it does def- it does technically do get old. Even to my honest opinion, yeah, zombie apocalypse is just a cliche, it's the same old same old shtick. But I digress with that. But again, I would just say that The Last of Us, whether it's 1 or 2, their kind of post-apocalyptic world, to my opinion, is better. Like, I would definitely enjoy living in these kinds of worlds, just have to watch out for maniacal crazy people or people selling body parts. Even cannibals, you know, because uh, <laughs> we all seen a lot of that in the first game. Yeah, it even make me think of back at one of the Telltale Walking Dead games that involved cannibalism, because yeah, it does make a person go crazy if food shortage does go short. But then again, it's just another one of those moments. Again, that's just how The Last of Us, us the universe, always revolves around the cycle of violence. Now we've been going to an ending resort, as to why Ellie decided to uh, let Abby live. Just like, uh, even I just realized, I just need to let it out, cry. Uh, like, of course, yes, Joel is dead. Uh, and would it even matter? Well, there is Lev. Because, of course, Abby has uh, taken care of Lev ever since uh, since Yara is dead, because why not? Especially for her habit to forgive herself, especially when taking two innocent kids from the Seraphites as, as they're about to kill Yara and Lev. And yes, indeed, I did remember Lev's name, I just kind of forgot. Especially, well, I do remember Yara's, but not much on Lev's name. I just totally forgot. It's an age thing going on with me. Now, even to say, hey, would I forgive Abby for what, uh, what she did with Joel? Eh, that's a pick your poison situation. I just, eh, I mean, again, it's the cycle of violence, people die, hey, we are murderers, we're human. Most of the human intent is just survival of the fittest. That's just how the Last of Us universe is all about, survival of the fittest. Because it's kill or be kill. I know it sounds like hey, me being a jerk, but it is what it is. It's just the world of the Last of Us. It's how it is. It's, again, it's the law of the jungle stuff. Even to point out, well, another thing that kind of bothers me. The truce between the wolf and the Seraphites. Would it have made Isaac the bad guy because it might have been Isaac that broke the truce? Because even I did believe that maybe Isaac was a relative to Marlene, but he's not. He's really not a relative to Marlene. Hey, Marlene is her own woman. Would it have been much more better just to live in the prosperity life and live it through the truce and, you know, training goods or whatsoever instead of, you know, again, me thinking that Isaac was the one who broke the truce and caused the world and war in the first place between the wolves and the scars? But even to be honest, when you pick up the journal entry, Hey, when you're at the Santa Barbara level, when you're as Ellie, and getting the sketch from the journal entry involving the Rattlers, Scars, Wolves, Rattlers, fuck them all. Again, it goes back to the cycle of violence. Even if a truce was made, sometimes, sometimes a truce would be broken, and hence the cycle will just continue. It's instead of the cycle of life, it continues to be the cycle of violence. Now, even happen to make my final thoughts, uh, since the next video will be the final collectible videos, and then I'll be taking a two-week break, and then and we'll start another project, because, yeah, at long last, this has been gone far too long I, than I would anticipate, because, yeah, IRL and all the other stuff, uh, stuff like that is annoying. Would I have to say that the first Last of Us was better than two? Eh, not exactly. Yes, indeed, the first Last of Us was likable well, entirely, especially when going through Joel. You also have to love Ellie as she is when you can connect with her for being a teenager and all ready to, you know, feel with her by Riley's death since left behind. When it comes to two, without Joel's death, Ellie would have had a purpose. Her. And especially it's another you could connect with, that you could connect with Ellie. Hey, this guy has been killed after just raising me like he just raised me like his own daughter. 
which of course again Joel raised his Ellie like like if Ellie is Sarah his old daughter before the outbreak day hey, when she just died even to technically say hey it's still a continuous cycle of violence whether it comes to the first game or the second game I love both the games names as such as why both both Last of Us 1 and Last of Us 2 are her amazing and indeed masterpieces especially with the universe itself as living in a post-apocalyptic world, living under order, living under freedom, living under a neutral route, The Last of Us universe is a perfect masterpiece. Whether it's one or two, the whole universe is a masterpiece. And well, with The Last of Us uh, TV series with Pedro, well, the guy who played The Mandalorian on, well, The Mandalorian, I'm definitely looking forward to it because, well, I love Last of Us. It's one of my favorite game series. And if there is a part three that Naughty Dog is working on, I'd be down to play it. <laughs> or, you know, stream it and make an LP of it in the future if that comes to case. But even though, and that's all it takes, that's it for this video. Again, up in the next video will be the final Last of Us 2 collectibles. Where it comes to Seattle Day 3 with with Abby and all of Santa Barbara. But no collectibles in the farm or in between Santa Barbara and the epilogue because those are it. And I guess so far that's gonna be it. But I do appreciate every one of you who, who have sub uh, followed and subscribed because yeah again work has been killing me a little bit lately and so is RRL. Especially with the mood hood and sometimes a bit of depression will come into play because Eh, it's IRL. Well, it is what it is. So, well, with that done, thank you so much for watching. And again, I'll be taking a couple of weeks break for the Tuesdays and Thursday uploads. Plus, as soon as the collectible, uh, final collectible video is up. And then, afterwards, we'll be starting a new project. I will see you guys in the next LP. My fellow Parthians, have a good day, have a good night, bye bye